a lot of work the last couple of days, and I just want to take the time because this is one of my longer days, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and now Mondays are my longest days, so just the way it is. I'm responding to a court. What happens is we received a notification from the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, and the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals said that it had issued a judgment and a mandate and had sent it to a judge. His name escapes me right now, but he's the he's the number he's the you know like you have Winston Churchill the third. Well, he is something the third, and then I realized, wait a minute, I've already put all the judicial officers' names in a document. Hey, I remember the third. That's the presiding judge of the court. So the Fifth Circuit sent a mandate to the presiding judge of that court. So we're responding back to it because eventually they sent to my P.O. box. It's regarding a case that was done sometime last year. Sent the response to my P.O. box and I got the P.O. box information. Sorry, I got to capitalize this. Oh, you're going to capitalize on that? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, get that back. Space. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the problem. They put in their motion that someone filed a affidavit supported by facts. <laughs> Remember how you hear me say you never have to say supported by facts because an affidavit is only supposed to be facts? Okay. So it's not something I would have authorized to be put in, and especially in my name. Well, the court is responding back to me at my P.O. box as if I'm one of the so-called defendants. Well, I didn't know about this case. And the only way they could have known about the P.O. box address is when in the same court, we literally, I filed a notice of change of address because my previous address was Chino, California when they held me for 22 months unlawfully and then overturned the case, I had all my mail being sent to me while I was in the jail system. So that court could not have been notifying me at my PO box because I never gave that court my notice of change of address. No, the clerk of the court gave the court of the Fifth Circuit my PO box for an appeal that supposedly it filed in May of this year. Ladies and gentlemen, the problem is we were never no notified about the case, never received any notices. I never was served, and I'm waiting for them. That's what this document is for. We're doing a motion to vacate, telling the court it had no jurisdiction over a person, blah, blah, blah. And since this is our non-appearance, ladies and gentlemen, what I want you all to do when you respond to the court, put in the response and put in non-appearance. You can even do, pay attention. I right, look, look, that's what this video is about. Hold on. We're we going to do something else because let me get rid of that. And let me get rid of that. We're going to come back to all of this other stuff in a minute. What is this? Oh, that's right. I had this text to speech junk up. Hold on. This is where I want to be. Okay. But I'm going to do this right here. We're going to go to one of these. Uh, of course, the common law, we already did that, so I, I can get back to that anytime. No, you know what? I want to save that. I got one more day of my trial. Oh, the trials and errors of people. I just go through so many trials and errors. Um, ladies and gentlemen, give me one second. I just messed up. I took too long because now I don't remember where I was headed. Dag nabbit. Uh, I got to go back to uh, uh, minimize. See, I got all of this stuff. This is what I do, y'all. I be doing all of this all at one time. All at one time. Ladies and gentlemen, not that one. I need to go back here because this is what I was talking about. And, oh, okay. I know what I was supposed to be doing. See, you see what it does? You see how I have to go through all of this stuff? Now, watch this. Uh, We're going to do, sir. Tiff, ah, A T E. Sir Tiff a kit. Uh oh, that ain't what I was supposed to be doing. I don't know why it did that. It got the Tiff a kit part, but it's the. 
Okay, certificate of non appearance. Certificate of non appearance. That's what I want everybody and their grandmama be doing. When you go into a court, the first thing you go file is a certificate of non appearance because there is no law requiring you to appear in anybody's court. You don't have to submit to their jurisdiction, and doing a certificate of non appearance is your challenge to the court's jurisdiction from the very beginning, from the onset and the offset and the nonset, dealing with their nonsense. You know what I'm saying, Vern? Now, normally, yeah, it says my query. Watch this. F I L E D A. Okay. Oh, no, I keep doing that. Okay. Now, it says my query was too short. That's why I just added a better query. Filed a certificate. The defendant took a certificate. The defendant took a certificate of non appearance. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain something to you because I don't think you understand. I don't know what a certificate of non appearance is. It just came to me, literally. While I was talking to you guys, that's why I paused. That's why I said, now hold up, wait a minute. That's the reason for this video. Ladies and gentlemen, the first possibility is that of noticing the noticing attorney may ask the court uh, for a court reporter certificate of non-appearance or a CNA. A CNA states that the respondent failed to appear at the respondent's site at the scheduled date and time. So yes, we've all heard of a certificate of non-appearance, but I want y'all to hold on. This is normally done by uh, the people who do depositions. So what I want you all to do it, because the court recognizes what a certificate of non-appearance. Okay, watch, you, you're going to understand now why I'm talking about a certificate of non-appearance. I've never done a certificate of non-appearance. Hold on. Certificate of non-appearance, and we want to do right here. Give me, give me, give me, give me. You know what? I'm even going to, let's do this. We're going to do sample non-appearance. I'm going to do that first. The reason why I want to do that first, now we're going to do D E F I N I T I O N of. What's the definition of appearance? Oh, he just appeared out of nowhere. Oh, oh he's going to have a second appearance. Oh, look at that. He's performed here before. He's appeared here before. And look at what he's doing now. He's leaving here. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen. Focus on the fact that that's not our definition. No, 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 no. We don't need that definition. We need this definition. See, we don't need the general definition. Pay attention. In law, appearance, Latin, appare, to appear, is coming into a court of either parties to a lawsuit, and it is the formal act of a defendant submitting himself to the jurisdiction of the court. Why would you want to submit yourself to the court's jurisdiction so they could do whatever they want to you? So ladies and gentlemen, that's why we're going to do a certificate of non-appearance. When we come into the court, we're going to literally do a non-appearance because you're not required to appear in court. Hold on. Dot PDF. We'll put, I'll put this on the site for you guys. I, 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 I wish I had come up with this before, but I just came up with it because I was doing this video. Ladies and gentlemen. See, sample notice of non-appearance at hearing in California. Okay, sample. It says free download Word doc. I don't think scripted did did did. Well, let me do a Word document, but hey, if it will let me do it, I will do it. You better believe it. It says it's free, and everybody knows that when something is free, it really ain't free. I'm sorry. When you go to SACCOM, oh, read free for three days? 
Read free for three, 30 days. Read free. You mean I get to sit up here and read this and nobody charges me for 30 days and then after 30 days, they're going to charge me for reading this? Oh, snap. Read free for 30 days. So I can read free for 30 days. Just read this statement free for 30 days. And then after 30 days, I come and I read this statement. They're going to charge me. That doesn't sound right. Read free for 30 days. So I'm just going to keep reading it for 30 days. Just, just read free for 30. Just keep reading free for 30 days. See, there it is again. Cancel at any time. I don't want to cancel at any time. I want to cancel now because I clicked on download and it said no. Okay, it said no. Certificate of non-appearance was taken and later he later claimed that he was. The defendant counsel explained in a letter. Oh, snappity whoppity poopity poppity. Uh, let's see. Court reporter certificate of non-appearance. Sample district court reporter certificate. Okay, they got following a notice of non-appearance. Uh, notice of appearance. See, they do notice of appearance. We want you guys to do a notice of non-appearance. And I figured you might as well use their own junk. Notice this. Notice of limited scope representation. You don't do any representation may be used. The rules do not apply to an attorney who has made a general appearance. So what I'm going to do, you see this PDF right here? This is a rule three PDF. What we're going to do is we're going to take this notice, take their form. I'm going to amend it, not on this video. I will do it separately from the video because I got work to do. 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 And I... Anyway, I have work to do, people. So I can't do it now. It will take too long because we're doing the video. I'll have to stop and explain why I'm doing what I'm doing, when I'm doing, while I'm doing. I need the actual notice. So let's see if they have it here. Uh-oh. These are the basic rules, ladies and gentlemen. All right. I'll put these basic rules up there. I don't think the appearance document is here. Dag nabbit. And I was hoping that it was. But we, we have the number for the document, okay? So what I'm going to do, this, whoa, 272 pages. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do with this, because it's 272 pages, is I'm going to save it. And the reason why I'm going to save it is for you all. Because I told you all, you must learn the basic rules of the court. 272 pages worth of these basic rules. You go over the first 20. That's all you have to do. Anybody trying to sue you, go over the first 20 rules. It's not that hard. Those of you who are not even being sued, go over the first 20 rules of the court. Now, the rules are all going to be basic and simple for every court because it's called uniform court system. Just like you have the unified school district, well, the courts are to be uniformed. Uniform court system. U-N-I-F-O-R-M-E-D. T O U R T R U L E S S A M P L E. I'm just going to put sample. Okay. And it's going to be right where we put everything else in the release dismissal section. Now, we have this. And then I'll get to the, to the other point while I did the video because you're going to understand it. Okay. We want form C I V because I thought they would have a sample of the form. So we're going to go Google it. Come on, Google. Googly, smuggly, woogly. And let's see if there's another one. But like I said, I'm going to take their PDF and I'm going to amend it. See, this is a notice of appearance and entry of representation. You don't want to do an entry of appearance. See, sample notice of non-appearance, that's PDF filler. I don't want PDF filler. But I will even take this form and amend it. Because this is their form, ladies and gentlemen. I will take their form and amend it. This is their notice of appearance. I will take it and make it a notice of non-appearance. Well, any appearance is still an appearance. Ah, but it's not an appearance. And it will actually state that it's not an appearance. See, the Department of Justice. Now, why is the Department of Justice, and it's an OMB, 
doing a notice of appearance of attorney or representative before immigration court. Because even in immigration court, people are submitting to the court's jurisdiction. So we are going to do this right here. And we'll get rid of, we'll amend it. We will amend it. Give me my copy. Okay. Now, as I download this, we're going to go to what we were searching for. Okay, and I will go through and I will change. Now, see, this thing says eligible to practice law. Everybody's eligible to practice law. As the law, no state may license the practice of law. So everyone is eligible to practice law. So I will change it. They will be mad because you stepping on their toes. But we're going to step on some toes because the practice of law can't be, cannot be licensed by any state. We will highlight that. We will put that in there. They will understand. Uh-oh. It downloaded the form. Notice of entry. Okay. So we want to go here. Okay. Because it wasn't letting me go here at first. All right. California courts. This is their... Adoption mandatory use, the Judicial Council, they have created this form, okay? They have the three rules, the three rules. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why this is so important. That's why this document is so important because you must challenge jurisdiction off the bat. You have to. So we're gonna be doing a notice of non-appearance into that case because we've never appeared in the case. So we're gonna challenge the court's jurisdiction, which is the first thing you must do. We can't just respond to this court. And that's what they're hoping we would do is not respond so that that belated, ignorant, stupid judgment can stand, okay? We're gonna pretty much leave this form the way it is. Ah, and we'll do it for the straw man. That's what I'm gonna do. Y'all, y'all just don't know. And we're gonna change it. It ain't gonna be no CIV 150. Mm-mm. It's gonna be the EIV 150. Okay. The Eon Innovative Volume. So we're gonna make this the EIV 150. And we're gonna do V. Notice of entry of N O N. Because you, you guys get the non-appearances all the time. So we're going to do our own non-appearance document. It'll be up by Friday. I'll work on it tomorrow. Okay? Got work to do, ladies and gentlemen. So now we got to talk about the reason for this video. And I am so glad that I did this video because if I had not done this video, I never would have done what we just did. Ladies and gentlemen, let me show you what I did earlier today. Then you will get a better understanding. As I was writing to this court, I did this on the tablet, and then I had to go and look for some things on the computer. And so I said, okay, well, I got the computer on since I have my battery here, the reserve battery. Let me go ahead and do this. Today, it is 73 degrees. It was 102 yesterday, but it's only 73 degrees. Right about now, it's usually 95 degrees. So our temperature, because I guess there's a storm coming, but we had winds all day yesterday. The entire day, and I mean, they were, they were not small winds. They were strong winds. The whole state, like, almost got these winds. And so the temperature has changed drastically to the point 73 degrees is cold to me. Like I said, my body doesn't adjust to temperatures that much and very well. So 73 degrees is cold to me. And normally I'd be wearing a jacket right now because I really can't handle it. It is cold to me, but the winds, the windows have coverings over them so the wind doesn't blow straight through so i have all of those coverings down so that it's just comfortable but if i had the windows open i'd be wearing a jacket because it'll be too cold yes 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 i have a problem regulating my temperature ever since the operation which is why it could be 102 degrees and it only feels like it's 91 okay all right let's continue the court has issued an order and a judgment against the arbitrators who are protected under the Judicial Amenities Doctrine. This court, it is believed, always got to put it as believed when you make a statement, has no jurisdiction to ignore immunity of any party and or agency and or diplomat. This court does not 
as it appears by the law, and this is uh oh, I did it right the first time. Such authority delegated to it under the Constitution's Bill of Rights, the law of the land, discretion. Yes, doesn't have any authority, discretionary authority. See, I said discretionary. My word. To issue a judgment against an arbitrator or other judicial act performing officer, and we object to this usurpation or usurpation of unlawful power. Usurpation. Ladies and gentlemen, I haven't used that word ever before. So I had to make sure I was using it correctly in a sentence. Judicial usurpation of power. Guess this is at justor.org. Justor.org. Okay. The source is the Virginia Law Registry. Virginia Law Review. Wait a minute. I don't care if Justor is a not for profit organization. I'm worried about this usurpation or usurpation of judicial power. Usurpation of judicial power. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll put this document up also. This is my document because what's happening, you guys may not be aware, that one court in Mississippi, the one court, that one court in Mississippi has done one thing. It has denied, after the first granting of the arbitration award and confirmation, it has denied every single arbitration that has come to it from SAA, every single one. Now, like I said, I'm just a subcontractor with SAA. They've documented on their records that I am the, pay attention, the director. Now, I thought that maybe the director of SAA was cracking under the pressure because that's what they try to do by throwing all this junk at you. Ladies and gentlemen, they don't like the quotation marks. I don't know why you cannot do that. I know that there's a way to go back into the system and change it to where it does accept quotation marks, but they don't like it, okay? Now, anyway, now, as they said, they're doing a reflection. Reflections of the way things used to be. Reflections of. Oh, well, come on now. For more than 10 years, the writer has called attention to the fact that the greatest danger that threatens the American Republic is the judicial usurpation of power. Since Judge Shiras, between two days, changed his opinion upon the legality of the income tax, a great revolution has commenced. What, 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 wait, when did he change the legality of the income tax? You mean he said it wasn't valid at first and then he said it was valid? To be more accurate, this revolution really commenced when the great jurist, Justice John Marshall, oh, Justice Marshall, that Supreme Court Justice of the 1800s, was installed into judicial office. His cherished ideas, which colored almost every decision he made, was to make this country a strong national government, which it was never designed to be. I am second to but a few in my admiration for the great stupid judge whose decisions are an an Anamit of our jurisprudence. I don't care about any of that stuff. I'm talking about judge usurp usurpation and, and you pispapapation and pispapapolians. The so called protection of the United States mail was used as mere pretext to cover an unauthorized usurpation of the power. The imprisonment of Debs was wrong upon principle. Now, I could go through this and read this whole thing. I'm not worried. 
about that. I want the encroachment. And this is only a five or six page document, but I am more concerned about the case law associated with the judge usurping of their powers. Give me one second. I haven't seen a single case law yet. I do see the history and I understand the history because it is the history, but I haven't seen a single case, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm about to curse, law. And I must uh, say this is coming from a law school, Virginia Law Review, and there is no law. Look, they, they, they cite these cases, they cite these people, but they have not mentioned one law. Okay, see, as far as history, yes, this can do you. You can look this up, you can look up the information regarding the individuals. The individuals did actually exist. But that's not what I'm looking for, Chief. That's not the one I'm looking for, Chief. Dana Dane. Cinderella Dana Dane. Okay, that's where that come from. Uh, power and assumption. I don't want an article, I want law. Decisions in which the court usurp the authority of the people, however, in basically this democratic republic. There was no such thing as the democratic republic, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Now I do like Black's Law Dictionary's definition because that's where you get delegation of authority. And what happens, this is under torts. I don't want a tort claim. I wanna go after these idiots for violation of individuals' rights. So let's do that. Okay, so that's what I want to go after him for. But what I'm trying to tell you is as I was doing that document, I wasn't even sure that I was utilizing the phrase correctly. I just put it in there. And then I said, you know what? Uh-uh. Go and you find out for show. Find out for show. And then I said, I'm going to do a video letting people know how it works. So I'm glad I did this video because now you can see the two things. We did the non-appearance and a judge's usurpation. Usurping power from the people. That's what the whole system is. Remember, it's supposed to be a nation of the people, by the people, for the people. Okay, the only problem is they have taken away the people's power. Don't believe me? Don't believe me? Well, that's fine. You ain't got to believe me. Because I believe you. And that's all that counts. I live in my own world. I do not live in yours. And my own world allows me to believe me. Don't have to believe you. So we're going to bring it down to nine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, we're going to keep it the way it is. Oh, you know what? It doesn't like it. No, we can't do that. I have to undo that. Dag nabbit. All right, we're going to come here. See, what I have to do is I can't put it on the same line. It will change the whole document. I have to put it on its own line. I have to do that one and narrow and bold. And now I want to keep it. There we go. You follow me? And then I do that. Now, the unlawful assumption of the use of property, which is supposed to be belongs, not belongs, one more L, belongs to another. I uh, think it's interruption. An interruption or the disturbing a man in his right of possession. It's going to say man. 
I already know that. And this is assumption. Give me one second. And this is constitution, constitutional. No, Let's see, delegation. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and go to the website. Y'all excuse me for one second. Is this it, heritage? Oh, no. Okay. Historical commentary and issues. Now, they're going to have some case law in here. I, I, I'm sorry. I cursed again. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, Lord. This is another one of those sites. In order for you to read everything, you got to join and pay and all of that stuff. And y'all know I have no respect for them. They want to charge you for information. Why well, I stands corrected. They not charging. They got case law at the bottom. They got case law, y'all. They got, uh, I, I done cursed again. I'm sorry. I said case law. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the whole thing about usurpation. There is no such thing as case law. It does not exist. The courts don't have the power to enact or enforce laws. Yeah, I want to show references. Why you think I'm down here, mother... I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I told you they were gonna give me the curse. All right, here are the laws. So I will put this document with the other that we've done that didn't have any laws. See, watch this. Come on, go all the way up. Keep going, don't stop. Don't stop. And eventually I'll read this. Right now, I don't have time to read this. I'm still putting that together. So I will do that. You know, I'm sorry. I was just reading that in Jamaica, they just had the Jamaican independence. Now, not reading. Someone told me. I, this is hearsay. I don't know if it's true or not. But you know what we're going to do real quick? I, I really want to do that. Okay. I really want to take a look at that. Um, the first thing I'm going to say is I don't care if a person is gay. I don't care if a person is lay as then. I could care less. However, my God does care. And so I tend to stick to what he decides. And he ain't got nothing to do with your opinion. With him, it doesn't matter if you believe. You know what I'm saying, Vern? With him, it doesn't matter what you think. Because you think that what you think matters. He says, what he says and what he says matters because he's got more power and control than you and that's the god that i serve well what i was hearing in haiti the united states thinks that they're god see there's this thing called the law of flags so during i said haiti i'm sorry jamaica during the jamaican independence celebration jamaican independence the united states embassy and all United States offices, and Jamaica, it appears, flew, not the American flag, oh no! Why in the, would they fly the American flag in Jamaica? No, ladies and gentlemen, you know what they flew? I want y'all to hold on to this. Y'all definitely gotta hold on to your, your high hats and your low hats. We're gonna, we're gonna attach it to the end of the document, ladies and gentlemen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go document, and then we're gonna go insert pages, and then we're gonna go insert empty pages, and we already have it set for two, we're gonna set it for three, and we're gonna set it at six, and then we're gonna go, there are empty pages, y'all. Okay, this is one. So now we have to go to this right here, edit, and then we're gonna go, we're gonna add text. Watch this, add text. There's our box, and then we're gonna V. Okay, now the only problem is, ladies and gentlemen, is when I add text, what's gonna happen is I have to do it again and again and again. So it took 
we're going to take this one and we're going to go what it took. So what I have to do is I have to get rid of this and get rid of this junk right here, this advertisement. I have to get rid of that and I have to make it smaller. Okay. And I think we might, no, we, we might not fit. I thought we were going to fit. So we got to go a little bit smaller, a little bit more, a little bit more. Now, I could do this off camera. So let me do this off camera so y'all ain't got to watch me go through all of this. Oh, I'm so glad he's doing it off. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I decided to put it in Word form. It's a lot easier that way. It's too much information to put it on three pages. So it had to be more than three pages, and it's just going to take too long. Okay? Okay! All right. Got to go. Ladies and gentlemen, this was an article that was done by the Heritage Foundation. I believe it's where this article, yeah, the Heritage Foundation. This is an article that was done, and I can see why the Heritage Foundation would do such an article about judicial usurpation. But it's not just judicial, it's Congress doing the exact same thing. Again, decisions in which the courts usurp the authority of the people. Okay, not my determination. The unlawful seizure or assumption of sovereign power. This is the back to Black's law that we copied earlier that didn't copy correctly. So I'm going to make sure it's copied correctly. Ah, because it did copy correctly because they messed it up. Okay? They messed it up because you know what they did? They copied it from Black's Law. Interesting, ain't it? So basically, now that I know that, because that's the reason why we went there, uh-oh, constitutional, I think it's just constitutional rights. So let's see if that's what I am thinking. Let's get rid of this junk. Oh, it don't want to go away like that. It wants to be advertisement. Uh, the rights of the lawful, the the derogation and derogation of constitution and of oh that's a n d, okay, I don't think there is a derogation. I don't think the, I mean, I know derogatory, so I can see derog, but I don't understand derogation. Like Rogaine. Y'all remember Rogaine? Yeah. Hair claws for men? Yeah. I I I I I I can't be joining nobody's hair club, okay? No, I've been no hair for a long time. Don't need no hair. Hair ain't doing nothing for me. All you gotta do with hair is just you gotta keep messing with it. I don't wanna stop seeing oh, ads by Google. I, I'm just gonna stop visiting this site. That's that's what it's gonna be. You wanna keep throwing them ads in my face. Okay, derogation. This won't let me do derogation. You know what? Yeah, we're going to exit the page because it's their ad. See, I have ad blockers, and they want to pop up a whole lot more ads, and we ain't going to be having no pop up a whole lot more ads. But let's do the R. Oh, derogate. So there is derogation. D-A-T. I haven't, I haven't, I, I know derogatory, but derogation is not a word that I've heard before. Okay. An exemption form or relaxing of the rule of law. So derogation. Okay. Let's let's do derogated. That's why I told you. Derogation in civil law and common law is the partial suppression of a law as opposed to the annulment and abrogation. That's that's called the Gold Abrogation Act. It is sometimes used loosely to mean abrogation, the Gold Abrogation Act, as in the legal maxim lex posterior. Derogatory. <laughs> okay, so this is what the courts are doing, and I do like usurpation because that's what exactly what we were focusing on in this motion. 
And I'm going to put the derogation of the, I'm going to put that there. I'm going to follow it with the derogation definition that's right here. You follow me, ladies and gentlemen? Because I want to, what I do is I let the court know, y'all ain't doing nothing. Y'all not hiding nothing. Y'all did like the Catholic Church. Yes, I'm speaking specifically of the Catholic Church. Catholicism, when they sat up there reading to the people only in Latin, knowing that the people didn't understand no in Latin, and then telling them what they wanted them to hear. That's why so many people are so up today, because they sitting up there listening in Latin, listening to a language that they don't understand and thinking that that's the law. Well, you're going in the court, and what did they do? Did they not mix Latin? pig Latin with English and create their own new communication standard, have their own law books, where their own dictionary. What the? Okay. Ladies, Tomlins in public law, um, Unlawful seizure or assertion of sovereign power, the assumption of government. Now, here's the thing. What I'm going to do, you see where it says sovereign power? Well, that's not the definition definition. What I want is, you're going to do it the way you're going to do it. You better believe it the same way they do it. What I want in our document, yes, we'll post the document up online. Uh, we want the imprisonment of debts was wrong upon principle. I don't care about that. Uh, I want the people's power. That's the one I want. I want the one from heritage. Okay? That's the one I want. See, I want the one that talks about the people's power. And I know it's heritage. This is case mine. And seizure, authority, assumption, violent seizure of the throne. Uh, sovereign power, assumption, power, illegal. You know what? Forget that. I, I, I know what I wanted, but I'm going to go here because this is where we were going in the first place. Oh, I did certificate of non-appearance. Uh, yeah, we did certificate of non-appearance, and I want to get rid of... Defendant took uh, result of plaintiff's failure to complete... First de deposition. See, they're doing depositions, so I don't need certificate of non-appearance. What I do need is the usurpation of power. So I am going to have to do the usurpation of powers because that is necessary. No, that ain't it. I don't know where I was with the usurpation of powers. There it is. Prime or usurpation. This is what I'm looking for. Ladies and gentlemen, my trash people, the trashmen. They're coming to pick up the trash. And look, they're not even Negroes. I'm sorry. I had a friend. His name was Will. And Will used to say, Negroes are good for nothing but taking out the trash. Yes, he was black. Anyway, he used to joke about that all the time. And see, some people are going to hear me say that. And they're going to think it's okay for them to joke about it. And then they're going to get shot. Or somebody's going to drive by and light them up. Or they're going to be driving down the freeway and somebody's going to light them up. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be going around saying that. You're going to get yourself a lot of, oh, a whole lot of trouble. Look at the definition of usurpation. Dictionary define usurpation in a consistently law abiding constitutional nation, such as was the United States. The crime of usurpation is unheard of. Politicians, officers of the state, and federal government enter into office lawfully and were severely checked against arrogating to themselves non-constitutional power. To understand the nature and gravity of the crime of usurpation, we must consider first the fundamental notion which underlie it. Okay? Definition of justice. Usurpation is first of all an act violating justice. <laughs> Thank you guys so very much. Thank you. I just don't know what to say. That's what I've been looking for. That statement right there. 
<laughs> anyway, justice requires, as the Greek philosopher Aristotle, who cares about that idiot, teaches that what is owed to the other be rendered to him. Literally. Is that what Aristotle taught or is that what the Bible taught? Anyway, in both the moral order and the political or civil order, it is law which defines what is just. As Aristotle said, all lawful acts are in a sense just acts. Oh God, just acts. Oh, he is so smart. I guess he got that from the Bible too and wanted to take credit for it. This concept of law as defining what is just is also the very basis for the biblical notion of the law, the Torah. Really? Huh. So I guess they're agreeing with me, but I don't think they understand that this was written before Aristotle was alive. I've never read this before, but ladies and gentlemen, um, yeah, I'm going to take this right here. I'm going to take this whole section and I'm going to uh, post this in the document, copy, and then I'm going to take this information and I'm going to put it in the other document, Juris, Judicial Usurpation and the Constitution, and I'm going to put that together. The reason why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it and putting it in here is because these idiots decided, and this is, I told you guys that there were cases out there that judges were making decisions and they never ever contacted us. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, they never contacted us. They never told us that there was a pending case, but they make decisions saying that we never responded. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Deference. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the problem. That's illegal. We have a right to respond. We have a right to be notified. Those are our common law rights. Those are our mace, uh, mace, basic fundamental principles of common law rights. Now, because it says usurp usurpation is, first of all, we want to say B E L I E V E D to be an act violating justice. See, we put that because we don't want to have statements in because there are no laws associated with it. Okay? Now, what we're going to do is that's the end of this document for you guys. We're going to finish this. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting in, I'm not going to put usurpation. I put usurpation of unlawful powers because they didn't have the right to do it in the first place. Copy. But let's do this. I'm going to put the case law in this document. I'll put this document up. I'll take this whole document and I'll attach it to the other document and you'll have that. If you go to, and it'll be up by the time the video is up. If you simply go to, come on, what is it? Release dismissal agreement under PDF section. Okay. Release dismissal agreement under PDF section. It will be under judicial usurpation. So the word usurpation will be in each document. There will be at least two documents up there on usurpation. Many of you guys are dealing with these wayward judges who are lying and violating your rights. And you've been asking me, what do I do? What do I do? Lord have mercy. What do I do with these idiots? They just keep, they, they call them, you guys are calling them criminals and crooks. And as I told you before, there is nothing Okay, J-U-D-I-C-I-A-L, Judicial Usurpation of Powers. 
let's do a parallel search. They're not criminals. They're doing what they're doing because they are being allowed to do that. Now, pay attention. It is reserved for judicial usurpation of powers by inferior courts. Such writs are rarely issued. Mandamus is not used simply to correct error. Whose rule was that? The Supreme Court of the United States said this in 1967. It is reserved for judicial usurpation of power by inferior courts. Okay? That's what the writ of mandamus is for. The court's assumption of jurisdiction where none exists is the usurpation of judicial power and its orders are void. That's what we want. So I'll add this case law as well so that you will have it. And then you will be able to go on to, uh, what is the name of this, case text yourself and pull up the same laws and create your own document. This is me putting together a motion. So for those of you who, well, I don't know how to do that. The whole video is dedicated to that. It gives you the train of thought. It gives you the line of thought. It tells you that you don't make statements, but you say it is believed. It is assumed. It is presumed upon information. Let me show you the top of the document. Yes, I've known. I haven't been doing motions like this at all because I refused for quite some time because I thought it was stupid. This is a motion to vacate and for evidentiary hearing supported by affidavit. Comes down the defendants who challenge the jurisdiction of the court alleging to never have been properly. Oh, got to get rid of that bin again. Never have been properly served. At any stage of these proceedings, challenging personal venue and subject matter Jurisdiction of the court in rem, personum, and subject matter jurisdiction. That's the three. We challenge the personal jurisdiction first because you must challenge personal jurisdiction first at the onset. Okay. We thus attest to the following facts based on firsthand knowledge and or information relied upon and supported by the record of this purported court of record. If we all know and presumably believe that jurisdiction may be challenged at any time. So we, the non-appearing so-called defendants, here and now challenge the jurisdiction of this court as indicated above, herein, and below. You follow me, ladies and gentlemen? So we'll put this document up there. You don't have to use all the words that I'm using, but understand the context. I'm not being bludgeoned. I'm not hitting them with a sledgehammer, but I am documenting. This, I don't know why I, I didn't see myself get rid of nine. Uh oh. Okay, but I need nine there. Ooh, glad I caught that because I would have sent this in. Whew. All right. And by entering this information, this lets them know where we're headed because I'm accusing them of conspiracy. Usurpation of power, the court cannot act outside its own jurisdiction. If it has no jurisdiction, it does not have the authority to act. That's what I'm doing. What I'm saying is that, as you guys are aware, we have the duty to respond, essential elements of a contract, and the party's duty to respond. When the court ignores its own law, and there are more than 40 of their precedent-setting cases in this document, when they ignore, acceptance may be inferred by acts or conducts of the parties. And we're constantly responding and say that it's a performance contract. Because the contracts are performance contracts, ladies and gentlemen, the court cannot sit up there and say there ain't no contract. They must now make a determination. If they have the jurisdiction and authority to determine the contract and the validity of the contract, they must now prove that the acts and or conduct did not constitute acceptance and a um what uh it's not acceptance what's the other word assent to the terms of the agreement they must now have that proved on the record and they never do why because they don't want to have that argument 
because they realize that what they've been doing to everybody else by locking you all in the contract simply because you sign a signature on a document that you never read is the exact same thing that's being done to them. That's what they don't like. They're going to have to get past that, over that, around that, through that, but it's no mas. So ladies and gentlemen, we'll finish this document. This document is called Response to the Court. You'll find it under Response to the Court. Hey, glad we had this time together. Now we're going to let uh, Carol Burnett send you guys away. Got to go. Wasn't trying to do an hour, but I think the information was that important. Don't you? If you like the video, click like. No, do not do that. Do not click like. Do not click subscribe or any of that. And this is not reverse psychology. You guys know I don't do that. You know, I don't advertise my videos in such a way. If you like the video, hey, you don't even have to tell me you did. Just understand that that's why I do it, to help you. Take care of yourselves, everyone. Got to go.